But um, I said, because I'm gay and this is my boyfriend. Um, mm. And I remember her telling me, you know, um, you're my son and I love you no matter what. Uh, she said, nah, I don't understand it. She said, I don't understand it. She said, I ain't gay. I ain't never been gay. I ain't thought about being gay. Mm. <laughs> don't know anybody who's gay. <laughs> um, but she was very supportive and very, um, she made sure that I knew that she still loved me. That, you know, just because I told her that, that it wasn't something that, you know, would take her love away from me. Uh, she did have a... a, a <coughs> A bit of a struggle with it for maybe a, a week or so actually I can remember at home she was really quiet um, she was very isolated for from me for that time um, she had said that he couldn't come to the house anymore which lasted a couple weeks um, thank you mom um, but um, and I think too with her she knew that she knew the son that she raised and she knew that just because she knew this about me it didn't change the person that she had always known me to be um, and growing up in a single parent home as an only child, I had a lot of responsibility that was given to me, but I also had a lot of liberties. You know, it was always, you know, if you do what you're supposed to do, then pretty much, with, the, with limits, you pretty much have reign, free reign to do what you want to do. And I never abused that, I never got into trouble, I always made good grades in school, so she trusted, you know, that I was still making good choices. And then I very early on made it a point to always introduce her to my friends as I had always done and bring them around the house so she would be comfortable and see that, you know, nothing has really changed with me. You just now know who I really am and I am learning at that time who I really am. Um, and even to this day, you know, she loves and enjoys the company of, you know, all of my friends and wants them around and when she comes to visit you know she wants to see them she asks about them on the phone regularly and the same with my father he's the same way you know it's like you know if they're your friends you love them i love them you know and so being I, with a single parent is that how you got the gifts from it alone i have <laughs> nothing to do with it alone Having them folks calling my house and coming over here <laughs> doing an eye team investigation. <laughs> but if you have some gifts that you would like yeah. to give them, <laughs> look me up on Facebook. Serious. Be serious. I'll be serious. Oh, oh seriously. <laughs> seriously, if you have some gifts, no. <laughs> She took so long, I forgot what we were talking about. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find that? Oh, really, girl? Oh, That's because you old. <laughs> <laughs> Your memory is leaving you. Oh. <laughs> no, I always knew. I was. I, I feel like I was born gay. And I've always known. But I didn't accept it until... I, well, I... I always accepted it, but I didn't embrace it until I graduated. My senior year when I graduated and when I got off the school bus for the last time, when the school bus took me home, the last day of school, my senior year, that's when I was like, oh, no more. What I don't have to go through that no more. The side was because I didn't have to go to the I didn't have to go through the bullying anymore. I didn't have to go through, you know, all the name calling, all of that stuff. I didn't have to, you know, being asked all these questions that I didn't want to ask, I didn't have to go through that anymore. And so that's when I accepted the fact and I like walked in my true self. Like, I'm gay mm -hmm. and I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. I've never tried to date girls, although I, you know, like you said, for the prom and all that, mm -hmm. we had girls, took the prom and all that, but then it's just like, that was just for, for mama now. They already knew I ain't want no girlfriend. I was trying to get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but God that didn't work out. <laughs> oh yeah, it worked out. I got some children. I got some children. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about let's talk about relationships because you're talking about your first boyfriend and everything, and just like the relationships. Like now, everybody that's a part of this panel, none of us are involved in relationships, and this is one of the reasons where. We decided that we need to come together and start talking about stuff like this because Naisha, she's single. Jasmine, she's single. And she says she's content with being single. I'm single. And then Jason's single. And Mario. I'm not. I'm engaged. My husband is in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. <laughs> oh, <single>. yeah. 
news flash. Breaking news. Yeah. I am not single. He she can't get him out of here. <laughs> We're working on his passport and visa. So I'm only gonna be here a couple more weeks. I don't know if you wanna say that on the camera. You know they're trying to keep immigration down and stuff. <laughs> you might want to keep that to yourself. <laughs> it alone helped me out. <laughs> I'm All so, right. I'm so sorry, Bishop. I'm gonna be talking about you for a while, honey. You are part of everything now, honey. But anyway, relationships, we've all been involved with people in relationships. So what are some of the things that, you know, you learned from your previous relationships that you would like to share with people, you know, that are involved in relationships? Are people who are considering, you know, becoming involved with somebody in a relationship? What are some of the things that you can share with them? kind of help them out? Well, I think for me that, especially right now, at the place that I am in my life right now, I have really learned, um, excuse me one second, my dog is barking. Lily, hush. <laughs> See, we are keeping it real, and I real. My sister <laughs> talks about me for being very professional, but you know, I have some realness too. Lily, shut up. Girl, that was the first for me, honey. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. <laughs> I'm going to call Peter. Because she's over here abusing Lily. Good. I'm Come get her. Peter. <laughs> um, at the place that I am in my life right now, one of the realizations that I had um, probably within the last five years and has been ongoing, and I'm also learning that too, that things that you learn in your life really are ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm learning to that I, I to really love myself and that now I'm at a place where I really do love myself and know what that means. And I think that there was a time in my life when I didn't, when I really thought I did. But I look back at some of the things that I accepted, you know, in a relationship that if a person really loves themselves, they probably wouldn't, well, no, they would not accept those things. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that. Um, um, teaching of, you know, really truly loving myself that I probably would not have learned had I not gone through certain situations. Mm. Um, I don't know how I become the moderator of this, but anyway, I just want to know. Because you talk you so said, much. <laughs> you, said, you said there are things that you thought you loved yourself, but now in the place that you are, you realize that you really love yourself now. What are some of the things that you were going through when you thought you loved yourself, but you really didn't? And now that you love yourself, you know that you do. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it can be, it, well, it, one of the things that's really simple and not to tell all of my business, because I am a private person. Um, <laughs> um, knowing how and feeling comfortable in letting someone know how I want to be treated or how I want to be loved. And this is something that you and I talk about mm -hmm. and that you say that, you know, people love differently and, and I'm aware of that now. However, in that, I also am aware of how I want and need to be loved. So I can say if someone can't do that for whatever reason, that, you know, this isn't the relationship for me because, you know, this is how you do it. And for me, that doesn't work. Doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. It just means that we are not for each other. And I'm okay with that. You know, I still have my moments of hurt when I come to that realization and disappointment, but at the end of the day, I know it's better for me and for them because we essentially we would both be unhappy, you know. Where in the past I would try to make something work because I wanted to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm not willing to hold on to something just for the sake of having it. If it's not right and if it doesn't feel good and if it's not adding to me and my life and vice versa, then why do it? 